Shouts up at the front, sign in. If you haven't done that yet, make sure you do. Don't want you to miss out on that. But don't worry, you'll have a chance to get samples at the end as well. Um, but first, I am going to pass the mic off to Dan. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you again for coming out. Um, for those of you who do not know, this is Brittany Cermak, our registered dietitian nutritionist here at Gold's Gym. Uh, Brittany went to Ashland University and Case Western Reserve University, where she received her bachelor's and master's in nutrition. Brittany was classmates with our previous GM, Kaysen, here at Coles, um, and now she works with several of our clients here at the, the gym, and they have really enjoyed getting to work with her and work towards her weight loss and fitness goals. So whenever you're here, if you ever see Brittany, feel free to reach out to her and ask her any questions, and she'll be more than willing to help you guys out. So now, I'm gonna turn it over to Brittany, and she can get us started. Thanks, Dan. You're welcome. Thanks everyone for coming out today. So the um, purpose of me being here today was um, brought to my attention about, you know, Brittany, what can we be doing during the holiday season to prevent weight gain? And how do we keep our clients engaged with coming in for workouts and just have people live a little bit health, more healthfully during the holiday season? So um, as Dan mentioned, uh, I work here with um, Gold's Gym and my com with my company, Your Life Nutrition. And I started Your Life Nutrition because I really feel that people need that individualized counseling and need that personalized help when it comes to figuring out wh what they need to do to meet their goals, whether that's in the gym, whether that's figuring out how to meal prep, things of that nature. So definitely feel free to reach out to me if you're interested in services in the future. But maintain, don't gain, all right? So again, we've already kind of hit Thanksgiving, and at this point, we are gearing up 10 days to Christmas. And I'm sure you, ha, who's been to a party so far? Yeah, right? I mean, we are inundated with party after party and social gatherings and office treats and school, you know, school items that come through. So whatever it is, you are probably faced with a lot of extra goodies this time of year that you don't normally have in your daily routine. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about that today. So it's estimated that people consume anywhere between 3,000 to 6,000 calories in a typical holiday day, right? Especially if you're starting out with, people are starting with brunches or breakfasts, and you're going all the way through dinner, you know, and uh, drinking, desserts, appetizers, you name it. These are a lot of items that we, again, don't have and consume on a daily basis, which doesn't surprise us when that number on the scale starts to increase over the time from Thanksgiving to New Year's. So <laughs> there was uh, one follower that I really like to um, look at on Facebook, and they're all about how to convert the calories you eat into exercise. And so they estimated, based on eating about a 5,000-calorie meal or day's worth of calories on one of those holidays, you would literally have to run or walk a marathon to burn it all off. <laughs> Who's interested in doing that after all of their holiday treats? Not me. I sure have not trained for a marathon. And to think that, oh, I just had a couple drinks and I had a couple desserts, that that really all adds up at the end of the day. So today we're going to talk about the 10 simple tips to avoid the holiday weight gain, right? So again, we've already kind of hit Thanksgiving. We've had a couple weeks since then but we are constantly being flooded with these extra sources of calories. So one of the best things I like to recommend is number one, have a plan. So setting a limit on your appetizers, right? So you go to a party and usually you're not eating the meal first. It's all these appetizers that are laid out before you and they could consist of things like cheese and crackers and chips and whatnot. But my recommendation is to only indulge on the special ones. Because at the end of the day, you could kind of have cheese and crackers or chips or nuts kind of all the time um, or any time of the year. But uh, you might know that person who makes that amazing dip and you just have to have some because you only have the chance to have it once a year. 
Um, browsing the buffet and kind of looking at all your options first before digging in can also make you a little bit more strategic about what you pick. And if there are fruits and vegetables kind of laid out amongst the appetizers, I would definitely try and hit up some of those as well for some low calorie options. So not a really big appetizer plate, but still racking up to about 400 calories. This shocked me, but it just goes to show you how little things add up and how making smarter choices can allow for a lower, ap lower calorie appetizer plate. Staying active. So who's been going to the gym consistently since Thanksgiving? Woo, good for you guys, that is awesome. So let me ask you, how have you been able to manage that? Not easily, right? Do you feel like you have had to make special accommodations to make sure that you are actually getting to the gym? Some of you, yes. Some of you, no. It's just been a part of your habit and routine. I find that this time of year is just so busy, right? We got to go shopping. We got to see family or friends that are coming in from out of town. So my biggest recommendation is schedule your workouts. Just like anything else you would schedule. You schedule plans to go to dinner with somebody. You schedule a meeting. Schedule your workouts. And do it at a time that you know you can make it there. Aim to get at least 20 minutes a day. Maybe you don't have time to come all the way to the gym, but you do something at home. You got some weights in your room. You know, you do some squats. You pull up a video on YouTube. Whatever you can do to stay active during this time of year, it's only going to help you prevent that weight gain. And not to mention... Who enjoys coming to work out because it helps you relax and de-stress? I, for one, definitely feel that. And at this time of year, again, with all the hustle and bustle and maybe seeing people that you don't normally see that can cause some stress and just having those extra to-do lists, adding in that exercise can definitely help. And it can increase your energy levels. So don't get too hungry. Why do you think one of this is one of the tips that I recommend? So before a party, should you go hungry? Should you go completely famished? Why? Because then you pig out, right? So when we try to skip meals or save our calories, we end up having a really hard time controlling our intake when it does come time for those holiday parties or that meal. So snacking to try and stay in control of your hunger is actually a smart thing to do. Eating a nutritious meal with protein and fiber, especially in the morning time, can be really helpful. So I know my one cousin this past year, oh yeah, I'm not eating all the, all the entire day until Thanksgiving dinner, no breakfast, no lunch, no nothing. And it's like, but you're starving all day, number one, and then you're crabby, so I don't wanna to talk to you when I first get to Thanksgiving. And not to mention, it's gonna be a lot harder to make those healthy choices. Um, so having something like eggs and some avocado and potatoes like that seen in the picture can be a great breakfast to kind of fuel you up for the day. Um, it can help avoid those binges. Hydration. So especially when it's cold, like we are here in Cleveland, Ohio, um, we definitely need to remain hydrated throughout the year so that we can keep our skin looking nice and keep us just um, feeling good and satisfied. So did you know that the signal we get for thirst is the same that we get for hunger? Does anyone know that? So oftentimes we immediately say, oh, I'm hungry, if we get that signal, right? But sometimes our body could just really be telling us that we're thirsty. So trying to make sure that you're getting how much water a day? Huh? 64 ounces, yeah, yeah, you're eight cups of water a day, if not more, right? So trying to make sure that you're doing that can help you stay full and satisfied, as well as um, trying to tell your brain or think about it, am I actually hungry or am I just thirsty? Watching your portion sizes. This time of year can be so tricky when it comes to that because, right, we can end up with this mindset of, oh, it's a holiday, I could just eat whatever I want, right? But then we got party after party and another gathering and dinner and happy hour and whatnot. And those opportunities that we have and we tell ourselves, 
oh yeah, you could just have whatever you want. Well, then what happens with that number on the scale when we go and weigh ourselves, right? Maybe not the prettiest sight. So one of the biggest things that you can try and do with watching your portions is using a smaller plate, right? So maybe you grab a plate for, from the salad area or the appetizer area and you use a smaller plate to fill your plate that way. Also trying to load half of your plate with fruits and vegetables. Again, like I mentioned with the appetizers earlier, fruits and vegetables can be a great way to try and amp up your plate without amping up the calories. Trying to fit a quarter of your plate with the lean protein, so things like chicken, fish, turkey, those can definitely be the best options. And scooping your sides sparingly um, and skipping those seconds. So, did you know that it actually takes 20 minutes for your brain and your stomach to communicate to let you know whether or not you're hungry or full. Anyone know that? A couple of my dietitian friends in the crowd, yes. Also, very important to remember. So it's that, it goes back to that mindfulness, that mindful eating. So have we actually finished our dinner, sat down, and waited that 20 minute period before we jump back up again to get seconds? This can be another thing to do. So what do you do during that 20 minute time period? Talk to people, right? You're at a party. Talk to people that you haven't seen in a while. You know, go help clean up. Whatever you can do to try and keep yourself occupied for those 20 minutes to determine if you really are wanting more at that point. So again, this plate doesn't look overly loaded, right? We do have vegetables on there. We have some lean protein. We've got some starch but we also have the alcohol and the extra bread, and we do have some extra starches on that plate, right? Does this surprise you that this plate is 1,500 calories? Who says yes? I say yes, too. <laughs> and one of the things that you do have to remember, too, especially if you're not used to doing the cooking around the holiday season, people love to use extra butter, right? Because butter makes everything taste better. And a lot of times these, um, Holiday favorites are higher in fat and calories, and even sugar. So again, like I mentioned, trying to use that um, method of using a smaller plate can easily bring down your calorie intake just because you have a smaller amount of room to load up your plate with, as well as trying to redefine what your plate looks like. A lot of us load up on the starches and have a little bit of vegetables. But the other way around is going to tr dramatically bring down the amount of calories in your dish, in, in your plate. Liquid calories. This is an area that most of my clients struggle to recognize that this could be the real reason for their weight gain. So again, extra holiday parties, extra opportunities to go out and drink socially, having things like eggnog and hot chocolate, and maybe things that we don't normally have during the year, but again, they're part of those times that we do get together for parties. So trying to use smaller glasses can be something to help with. Go easy on the toppings. My brother, for instance, loves going to Starbucks. And his Starbucks order is kind of ridiculous. And I'm like, do you know you're drinking a 400 calorie latte right now? And so we talked about trying to switch to the skim milk instead, trying to forego the whipped cream, which he hated me for, and forget the drizzle, right, that goes on top. But again, those little things can help you still enjoy the flavor of that white peppermint mocha that is so good. Um, but help you to watch those calories here and there. Has anyone ever tried lightening up some of their recipes, whether that is during the holidays or outside of the holiday season? Anyone have any suggestions of things they like to do? Yeah. Yeah, using applesauce and cake mix, which helps lower the calories and the sugar. Nice, that's a great idea. So using the brown rice as a whole grain versus the white rice and stuffed cabbage, that's a great suggestion, which also amps up the fiber content. Very good. Um, some things that I like to do, um, we love making dips. And we, have, we used to use full fat sour cream, and now we use non-fat Greek yogurt. 
And I'm telling you, sour cream and Greek yogurt really have the same tanginess and consistency. And not to mention, when you use the Greek yogurt, you're getting more protein and it's a lot less fat and calories. So um, other things that you can try and do are fat-free broths um, for gravies and using, uh, again, the Greek yogurt for things like dips, mashed potatoes, casseroles, things of that nature. And just in general, cutting down on the butter and oil along with the sugar. Usually, if you're cutting down on just a little bit, it's not going to make a huge difference flavor-wise. Now, I always recommend trying to find a recipe online that has good reviews on it and has maybe recommendations of people who have made it before because you don't want to show up at a party and have that one bad dish, right? <laughs> but if you're interested in trying to keep that flavor but also lighten it up, this could be a great way to do that. The one thing that I've noticed over and over again with lightening up recipes, it's all in the seasonings. It's all in the seasonings. If you still have a lot of seasoning on the foods, you're not going to notice a huge difference if you are just altering things like a little bit of butter, sugar, oil. So again, when we look at these holiday plates, they are starch heavy, they are high in fat, they are high in sugar, and things like that are gonna be the things that cause that weight gain during the holiday season. But trying to alter our plate to look more colorful, right? We are including those fruits and vegetables. Those can be great things to lighten up the plate. Who brings healthy dishes when they go to a party? Nice. That's awesome. That's awesome. I know pretty much anyone can bet that if I'm going to a party, I'm bringing like a fruit or veggie tray, maybe some hummus, some salsa. They're expecting that out of a dietitian. But you could do that too. And it can be a great way to ensure that when you go to party after party, you at least have some healthy options because you're the one bringing it. And I'm sure everyone else is grateful because you're probably not the only one who's trying to prevent all the holiday weight gain, right? So things like veggie trays, even a hot vegetable to go along with the meal, hummus, the fruit trays, all of those types of things can be great ways to lighten up the options that are there. Allow dessert. Did the dietitian just say allow dessert? Yes, I did. Why? Because if we're going to try and tell ourselves I'm not going to eat dessert from the time of Thanksgiving all the way to New Year's, number one, that sucks. <laughs> no fun, right? And when we try and deprive ourselves to that point, probably not going to feel too good about ourselves and we're probably going to end up in a situation where we are binging and probably end up binging on things that we don't even really like or would want that much anyway. If you try and save room for dessert, again, use a smaller plate. Try and save, you know, don't go up for seconds when you know you want dessert and stop, enjoy, eat it slowly, maybe drink some coffee with it, you know, put your fork down in between bites, talk to people. All those things can help savor what you are eating and prevent you from going overboard. And again, this time of year, we are just flooded with all different kinds of desserts. And did you know pumpkin pie, which I know is common at Thanksgiving, but we usually have it around Christmas time too, um, can be the lightest form of pie versus things like the pecan pie. Does that surprise anybody? Yeah? Why do you think that is? All the nuts. And what are the nuts coated in? Lots of sugar, right? So nuts are automatically higher in calories, and we're adding in all that extra sugar. It is ending up being a quite, quite a bit higher in calories. Yes? One thing I would like to see on here is a fat-free ready whip. Oh, yes. That is a staple in the Cermak household, fat-free ready whip because it is actually only five calories for two tablespoons worth, um, and normal full, full fat um, ready whip is 15 calories for, I think, one tablespoon. So it's a huge difference because, again, you're decreasing the fat content. My favorite, Christmas cookies. Who's a fan? What's your favorite? I want to know. I got to know. Peanut butter blossoms. Oh, so good. Peanut butter blossoms, right? The sugar cookies with the frosting on it, right? So good. So again, when we think, oh yeah, I'm just gonna have two or three cookies, think about that that can still end up being 
anywhere between 300 to like 600, 600 calories, especially depending on the size. Now, one thing that um, my mom and I and my grandma have a baking tradition every single year. We got it coming up on Tuesday where we bake all day long for Christmas. It's going to be awesome. One of the things that we've tried to do over the years is we actually still bake all the same recipes. We haven't changed them. We haven't made them healthier, but we've changed the size. We have probably cut down the size of the cookie by a third, which means that you have a smaller cookie, which means number one, lower in calories. Number two, it means that it makes more cookies, which means more sharing, which is also cool. And number three, it just makes it where then people like to have a sampling of things at parties. So then at least people can have a try of it without having a full blown, same, you know, bigger size cookie. So just a suggestion for you. And then one of the biggest, most helpful things when you're trying to achieve any goal is have an accountability partner. Does anyone have this in their life? You sure do. I'm your accountability partner. That's right. That's right. No, I know I'm not there to slap your hand when you're taking a cookie to your mouth, but when you have somebody in your corner that you know is going to text you or talk to you and you've shared your goals with them and just help keep you accountable, this can be one of the most helpful things during the holiday season. This person that you choose in your life, you know, should encourage you. You guys maybe go to parties together and you're telling each other, oh yeah, let's, let's make sure we're not going too crazy on the desserts this time or let's stick to one, one glass of wine, right? They can also be the same person that you schedule your workouts with. Because I know for myself, if I have somebody that's waiting for me at the gym, I don't want to let them down. And they probably feel the same way about me. So that could be another way to try and make sure you get in those holiday workouts as well. But guess what? We're human, and sometimes all of the treats get the best of us, and sometimes we overdo it. But what can you do? Just restart right? Make your next choice a healthier one. Start over. Start scheduling in those workouts. Remind yourself of your goals. If you have goals during this time of year to try and maintain your weight, then write things on a sticky note. Put it in your bathroom. Put it by your scale. Put it where it's going to be very visible to you so you can remember the goals that you have. And that's all I have for you guys today. What questions do you have? Yes, Dan. Um, as a trainer, I recommend people to you know, play in blood for the day. A lot of times I hear people say, blood is fine. It's boring. I can't do that. What advice do you have to kind of mix it up and give people other options where they're not adding the liquid calories? Sure, absolutely. So the question was, you know, as a trainer, he gets questions all the time and just gets complaints from clients of water is so boring, what can I do to change it up? Because they're so tempted by those liquid sources of calories. Well, one of the biggest things that you can do is try and add citrus to your water or any type of fruit slices. You could do kind of that flavored water naturally. Um, the other thing is a lot of people don't think about this, but sparkling waters they're actually just as hydrating as regular water, and it can kind of give you that fizziness, whatever, so you may not want to drink it in the gym because you can kind of end up a little burpy, but um, that's another really great option. Like um, Brands like LaCroix, again, are like sugarless. Um, there's also things that I, I'm, I don't mind adding things like Crystal Light to my water or other sugar-free, calorie-free drink uh, powders or um, drops. Those are really convenient too to just throw in your bag and have with you. Um, but those are really great ways to try and make sure you're still drinking your water, staying hydrated, but not adding in all those extra calories during the day. Any other questions? Well, I thank you guys so much for coming out today. Thank you for all of you who joined us on Facebook Live. I appreciate you, and I will definitely get back to your comments. Um, please let me know if you're interested in uh, starting to work together. All the services for anybody who came today and you sign up by the end of the year um, will be 10% off. So definitely let me know if you're interested. Um, if you wrote down your email address, I will definitely send you over the material from today as well as the handouts. 
If you were interested in learning more about lightening up your recipes, I also have handouts over there for you. So definitely check those out. And I just want to give a big thank you to um, the companies who sponsored today's event, which were RX Bars, um, The Enlightened, Broad Bean Crisps, The Kind Bars, Saffron Road, Chickpea, and as well as the Explore Cuisine. So lots of samples, lots of coupons. Thank you for all of my sponsors today, and I appreciate you guys all coming out. And I hope you enjoy the holidays and have a little bit more health fully based on what you learned today. Thank you guys.